from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back. This is theCUBE's coverage of VMworld 2018 here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We'll go back to San Francisco next year, but here in Vegas, third year in a row, uh, and uh, I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host is John Troyer. Welcome to, back to the program, Gil Schneerson, who's the SVP and VxRail General Manager with Dell EMC. Gil, great to see you. Great to see you, Stu, great to see you, John. All right, so I caught up with you at Dell World uh, just a few months ago down the strip. Um, at that point, we couldn't take an autonomous vehicle, but since then, that Lyft has like autonomous vehicles, so we know things can change pretty fast uh -huh. uh, in the area. Why, why don't you give us, uh, you know, what, what's the update on on your end, what's, what's changed since last okay. we've talked? Thanks for asking. Um, as, as you know, we're moving very fast. We're moving very fast, picking up many, many new customers every quarter, but um, the reason for that is because um, we keep innovating. So for example, in this show we announced a new um, G-Series, a new 560, which is a, a new two by four Dell based now model with more memory, more CPU, more capacity, very popular form factor by our customers. Um, we announced that we're now um, doing a SIM ship with, um, with VMware, we're calling it synchronous releases. Our customers told us that they don't want to wait between a vSAN release and a VxRail release. Um, we announced um, VxRail participation in um, Dell's customer loyalty program, um, which is a lot of features for you know, future proof. Um, we just included VxRail in the network fabric design center, which is kind of a sign for things to come is where do we need the whole solution to be um, with networking inclusion. Um, uh, more configurability for VxTrack SDDC. In other words, we, we, we keep moving forward uh, very quickly. Yeah, and, and, and Gil, you know, we, we've, we've had the chance to document this since, since day one. So, you know, vSAN, uh, you know, I said when it was uh, first announced, this was, you know, the, the rising tide that will really uh, raise all the ships in what, what we launched as the, the hyper-converged environment. VxRail uh, was the at the time EMC and VMware, you know, creating a team together. Took the product people, took some some various components, and made a product that you know really accelerated in the marketplace and was very successful. Thousands of customers. vSAN's got fifteen thousand customers. You're, you've got to be one of the you know top deployments out. Is it still you know the you're all under the Dell family, but is it still made up of those people? And how, how does uh, how I, does that teamwork and innovation between various groups work today? Yeah, no, look, when we did this, there was no run book. You know, how do you take two teams from two companies? But we discovered over time that what we've created is extremely powerful. We were growing three times the market. Um, and obviously that's, that's not a, a simple thing. And so, um, on both of our sides, we're doubling down on the roadmap, the integration between the companies. And as I said, synchronous sh um, shipping is an investment because what you really have to do is move more things towards the VMware side so testing are done quickly because you don't want to forego quality. So we're, we're very happy with this model. I think, um, and I think customers are happy with this model. You take the software, you put it with a specific configuration, you automate it to match, and you get something that's very resilient. And I think um, both, both of us know that and both of us keep investing it because it's working. That's great. Gil, I wanted to kind of uh, follow on with what you said about you know, the VMware and the, and, and the Dell teams coming together. So my tribe is on the VMware side, right? And the VMware admins have always been very involved with storage. And for the last couple years, they have been very involved cross-training on vSAN. So I'm kind of curious about the demand uh, for VxRail and where it's coming from. Is it the VMware folks that are saying, hey, let's look at this? Is it the C-level? Is it the, the old storage team? Is it the, is it the business uh, unit? Like, wh wh what's, who's, what's driving this I, transformation? Yeah, I'll tell you. I, two years ago, you needed to talk to people about why HCI. Um, more and more, the conversation is why your HCI. And we have a very unique position because we are part of the VMware stack. And in fact, you know, you, maybe we'll touch on it later, but HCI um, has its place, but we're already looking at what multi-clouds means from infrastructure standpoint, right? And so, if it's a transformative conversation, it would be some sort of a, an architect in their environment that's transforming. And they'd have a cloud project and they'll have a name for it, you know, Cloud One, My Cloud, one of those. Um, but most of the cases is still a tech refresh. They're moving from a three-tier architecture to a consolidated hyper-converged. Um, and VAdmins have a lot to say. Um, the server admins have a lot to say. 
And the reason they, they buy an appliance or basically buy our automation is because they realize that it saves them time and it takes away risk. And many of them, by the way, choose to deploy vSAN on their own with servers, um, which we call ready nodes. And they're also very successful. In other words, it's, it's how much value you want on top of vSAN that you're willing to pay for, and, and they're, they're voting with their wallets. Yeah, Gil, I, I'm really glad you brought up multi-cloud, because it's one of the big themes of the show, and, and it, it's funny, because we know that vSAN is a critical component of the VMware Cloud Foundation, you know, the VCF stuff, but I hadn't really thought about, I mean, VxRail is just built with vSAN, so yeah. I, I, I still, even though I know it's a software thing, I think of it as an appliance and you know, something coming from Dell. Talk to us about how VxRail fits into the multi-cloud world for customers. So VxRail, you know, today we have VxRail and we have VxRack. Yeah. Um, they differ only in parts of the management stack on top of them. There's a VxRail manager, there's a, an SDDC manager that comes from VCF. And by the way, those over time will find their way into, <laughs> into some, some way of a consolidated stack. And, um, the, the reason I'm talking about multi-cloud today is because we have not, we keep innovating with the vSAN team, um, we keep benefiting from their innovation, we keep adding on top of it. But more and more you'll see us integrate with other parts of the VMware stack. So for example, I think Pat touched on our uh, future or upcoming integration with our cloud assembly services. Right, so you could take um, a software-based management, realize and manage VX Rails that you own as a service. So our current roadmap and investments are not only to inv invest in being the most resilient, robust, vSAN-based infrastructure, but tie into every part of the VMware stack so we can really be that infrastructure for multi-cloud. So between VxRail and VxRack, and the different touch points across the stack, we're really weaving it into the entire stack. Um, th that's our strength. We are a VMware product, essentially. Right, and so we've realized that we need to take the whole breadth of the VMware stack and integrate as appropriate at every level so this choice becomes a no-brainer for customers. Gil, since, um, since VxRail is an appliance, like what, what's the, how often does it get updated? And are, are, people, are people capable of, of taking those updates since it's an engineered system like that? How? Yeah, look, in the past, when people wanted a lot of things to work together, they'd qualify them, they test them, and then they'd go upgrade them manually, um, piece by piece, through a, 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 a recipe, if you will. What we've done in the appliance model, we've added our own IP, which basically takes all of that and automates it. So what our customers get is a downloadable package from Dell EMC that includes the entire VMware stack update, all of the drivers, all of the firmware involved, and does a one boot update for each node in the cluster and cycles through it automatically. So, because we now are synchronously shipping with VMware, and by the way, customers are concerned with express patches, those we do within seven days or even faster. Um, so every time VMware moves forward, every time we move forward, we package it all up and we make it downloadable and upgradable automatically. So it happens as, as, as fast as they need it to be, you know what I mean? It's, um, th there is no, limitation because it's an appliance. It's the same thing as having a stack. Yeah, Kill. I wonder if we could talk a little bit up the stack. The, the, some, the early customers that I've talked to, we know that you know, modernizing your applications can be really challenging. Uh, a, a, a pattern that I've seen from a number, number of customers is step one, modernize the platform. Step two, start modernizing the applications. What are you seeing from your Rack and Rail customers uh, as, as they, they, they go through that kind of transition? That's a good question. <laughs> I think most of the customers we're talking to today are still modernizing the infrastructure. That's the reality. Um, they need a more agile environment because um, they need to take care of you know, things up, up the stack and go into you know, development models of all sorts. Um, you can also see that you know, um, there's a lot of success with our um, joint work with Pivotal on Pivotal-ready architecture. And so Pivotal and us have created the ready architecture or based on VxRail. The value in that is really Cloud Foundry and what it brings to the table and the design. And we see a lot of adoption for that. So people are adopting Cloud Foundry as a development model and a deployment model. They're using VxRail as an infrastructure um, and obviously because of its, its ability to migrate across environments, um, that infrastructure you know, transcends, it, 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 it makes sense. So there are two angles but um, 
But I think a lot of people are still modernizing their, their base infrastructure to be ready for greater things. Yeah. Absolutely, all right. Gil, want to give the final word. What, what should we be looking for, for, for from your group uh, as we go through the rest of 2018? Um, we're going to keep moving. We're going to keep innovating. Um, we're going to make sure that the solutions um, fit into the existing VR environments in a more seamless way every time we, we work on it. Um, and I got to say, if, if there are customers, our customers watching you know, this CUBE interview, um, I keep reaching out to customers and saying, look, we have many, many thousands of customers now. We do not want to lose the intimate relationship with them. So if anybody's watching and they're interested in a conversation, telling us what they wish to see on the roadmap, voicing their opinions directly to the product group, you know, I know my, uh, my title and, 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 and Twitter handle are going <laughs> to appear at the bottom. I invite people to reach out and talk to us. All right, great closing point, Gil. We're always loving fostering conversations and feedback, so Gil Schneerson, his Twitter handle's on the screen in case you're, you know, Schneerson doesn't you know, come off your keyboard <laughs> nice and easy. Uh, John Troyer and I'm Stu Miniman. We're also always love the feedback uh, when you send it on Twitter, and uh, we'll be back with lots more coverage here from VMworld 2018. Thank you for watching theCUBE. Thank you.